Did you get offered Austin Powers or did you have to audition for that? I got offered Austin Powers too. Wow. Yeah. And that was an extraordinary thing because that really was one of my first offers, mm -hmm. which I didn't have to fight for. And I remember it so clearly. I was in, I was in Toronto, funnily enough. I was filming, I, no, I was producing Extreme Measures with my then boyfriend, Hugh, mm. and I was frazzled. It was a big, expensive studio production, and it was my first time producing, and I was really frazzled, and I remember in the morning, cell phones had just come in. Uh, I remember in the morning, I just got this email saying, Mike Myers would love you to play opposite him in a movie called Austin Powers. I was like, what? And I said to my then boyfriend, Hugh, Look at that. He went, oh, just say yes. Mike Myers is a genius. Say yes. I'm like, what do you mean? What do I have to do? Comedy. I've never really done any comedy. He's like, just say yes. Just say yes. You don't even need to read the script. Say yes. I'm like, I'm going to read the script. So I read the script. It was hysterical. Right. And so I said yes immediately. And then later I found out that Mike had seen me on a talk show. And apparently as soon as I came on camera, this was in the 90s, he went, mm. oh, that's Vanessa. Kensington. And it was it was that lucky. Yeah. Years of fighting, years of auditioning. And he saw me on a talk show and went, yeah. So But that's but that, I, I have a I have a theory, Elizabeth. I say all the time, you never know who's watching. No. No matter what it is you're doing, you never know who's watching. And that's a perfect example of that. Yeah. Yeah. The things happen, the things that happen by chance sometimes, a chance meeting in an elevator mm -hmm. or just something. I know then we just have these sliding door moments. You know, if Mike hadn't seen that talk show, right. I'd have got Austin Powers and then maybe I wouldn't have got that or, or maybe I'd have got that. And, you know, you just don't know. But um, it's, yeah, it, chance chances are wonderful if they happen to go your way. No, I remember that because this is Mike Myers kind of at his peak, you know, the the 90s, mid 90s. And the, you mentioned your, your, your boyfriend, Hugh. And I think, you know, as a kid in my 20s i'd seen you whatever but in austin powers suddenly now you are in the public eye this was yeah. like your big break for guys of my generation did you feel that as well was it a big big deal to be in that movie yeah it it, it really made a difference to be in something which would go on to become a cult because yeah. interestingly the first movie which was really my movie um it did well but it wasn't but it did well because yes. it was extraordinary and mike was unbelievable as Austin, but it was like, whoa, what is this? And then that built and built and built so that when number two came out, it was a massive smash in the box office. I've only got a small part in number two. Mm -hmm. But to this day, people, it's it's as big today as it ever was. And, and it's pretty amazing to be in a film like that, um, which resonates. My son watched it, for example, and he was about eight. He didn't understand the rude bits, obviously. He just loved <laughs> it. The music, the costumes, the silliness. And you know, there's there's people still dress bizarrely as me and Austin for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of lovely. I like it. I like it a lot. Did you kind of, uh, and once again, just to clarify for people listening, the first Austin Powers did 67 million. The second one, 312 million. So like you mentioned, yeah. that's when it just really exploded. Did you yeah. get the humor that he was doing even more so because you are English? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, Mike's Canadian, but both his parents were from Liverpool in England. Yeah. So his humor was always on the English side, which means quite silly, yes. which made me laugh. I mean, on the set, he used to make me laugh. I mean, so much. I was really quite badly behaved on that set because I giggled <laughs> so much. I used to get sent to my trailer sometimes because when I laugh, I'm crying, then the makeup's mm -hmm. gone and they got quite cross. Um, so yeah, it is a very English sense of humor, I think, which just translated. And I love sure. Mike. His humor was never cruel it was just funny mm -hmm. and that is my favorite there's no nasty aftertaste in anything mike ever does it's just funny and i love that that's a great point you know it's interesting i said like i grew up in canada as well and canadian humor and british humor is very similar like you mentioned yeah. silly it's yeah. wacky it doesn't make any sense you know there was so much of of english comedy would be on you know pbs in Canada with Faulty Towers and Monty yep. Python and Black Adder. So very much similar sensibilities. So when I saw Austin Powers, I got it right away of just this ridiculousness. And like you mentioned, it's just, it's, it's, it holds up so well. And I say this with the ultimate uh, uh, compliment. It's so stupid. It's just stupid. <laughs> some of the stuff that, that you guys, they made you guys do. Yeah. It, it's just silly. 
hysterical. The very first scene we shot actually was on the aeroplane where mm. he's going around on that round bed asking me if I found him horny <laughs> with his bottle yeah. in the air. And it was so absurd. Yeah. When I went home that night, I mean, I laughed all day. But when I went home that night, I was like, what did we just shoot? <laughs> <laughs> what are people going to think when they see this? But luckily, they liked it. But it did take a while to catch. Do you uh, ever watch back any of your old stuff and, and see if it still holds up? For example, Austin Powers? No. I mean, mm. when my son was little, he was obsessed with Austin Powers and watched it all the time. So I'd walk in the room and, you know, watch a little bit. But I'm, I, don't, I don't really watch myself on, in anything, to be honest. I had to watch myself in Strictly Confidential because I was in the edit suite. Yeah. But um, I'm, I can disassociate. I've also had a beachwear company for a long time and do still do some of the modeling. And I, I can disassociate completely from it. I can discuss pictures in the third person. I can make suggestions for edits on scenes. It's not personal at all for me. It, it, I can do that. Do you uh, have a, a favorite scene from Austin Powers that, that stands out that you remember? that you were in or that he was in? Oh, my favorite. Yeah, probably the Burt Backrack bit on the bus in Vegas. I love that. It was <laughs> wonderful. 